and welcome to a warm, fuzzy edition of Ben's Junk. Warm and fuzzy in the nostalgic sense, of course. So, uh, let me tell you straight up here, right at the beginning, this is going to be a decidedly different installment of Ben's Junk. Uh, usually it's about some specific piece of gear, uh, almost always AV-related stuff, and there is that component to this one, I guess, but I figured I'd try something different here and just give a little reminiscence, if you will. So anyway, what I'm going to talk about today is a trip that my family took to Las Vegas, Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, and we're going to turn the clock back just about 20 years, I think. I think this was uh, the spring of 1997. Um, I don't have any specific dates or anything. I don't have the airplane tickets or anything uh, anymore, but uh, I'm pretty sure it was April or May of 1997. But anyway, what I've got here is this kind of a lunchbox pseudo cooler sort of thing. And uh, in it are most of my souvenirs from this trip. Now, um, this was during that period. I, I was still a bit underage in 1997, but uh, this was that period where Vegas was trying to reinvent itself as a family destination. And my folks bought right into that one. And so uh, we went, we were there for, I think, three or four days, and I spent pretty much that entire time in arcades. And the deal was that most of the casinos, you know, put up some other part of the building and built arcades there, or maybe uh, they put in some kind of amusement park rides. Uh, um, there were carnival games in some of them, stuff like that, so... Uh, while my parents were off pretty much playing slots for three or four days, I was at the arcade. And when I say arcade, I don't mean arcade in like the video game sense, but I mean it in the uh, skee-ball sort of sense. You know, the, the games where you'd get X number of points and you'd win X number of tickets and then you'd go and you'd claim crappy prizes. So... That's mostly what you're going to see in here. But before I open this thing up, uh, let me show you... Uh, well, first off, let me mention that there are some other uh, souvenirs that have just been lost to time. I, I don't know what happened to them. They're, they're just gone. Uh, and one of them I can't say I miss at all. Uh, one was a very ugly cat in the hat, Dr. Seuss uh, sort of hat. You know, like a, the three foot tall multicolor sort of thing. I uh, can't say I miss that one too much, but uh, aside from that, I remember we, uh, and, and it helps that I've already gone through this ahead of time, but uh, we ate at Planet Hollywood at one point, and I must have gotten a milkshake or something when I was there because I had one of those hurricane glasses, those tall glasses with the Planet Hollywood logo on it, and I uh, I, I think it got broken because I don't seem to have it anymore. And I know I've had it in my possession up until at least sometime in the last few years, but it seems to have gone missing, gone, gotten thrown out. Who knows? But anyway, now let's get down to business here at long last. So let's start with, um, you know, back then, if you've been to a casino in the last 10 years, 15 years or so, you play the slots or whatever, and you get to, you put in your money or whatever, or a voucher, and you get a voucher back out of the machine. You know, a piece of paper with a dollar amount, and you can go cash it in later. Back then, it was still honest-to-God coins. And I saved two of the coin buckets that my parents were using. So this one's from Treasure Island at the Mirage, which I have no idea if it still exists or not. Uh, Treasure Island, uh, this specific bit. But uh, yeah, I've saved this one. And then more notably is this one from uh, the Coney Island Emporium within the New York, New York Hotel, which is where we stayed, which um, was a pretty new, if not an outright new place when we were there. And I thought it was so cool back then. It was like walking around this simulated, you know, kids idea of, I guess, New York City. 
Um, of course, you know, it's a freaking casino. And uh, just a stupid, unrelated little memory here. I remember, I think it was at the Excalibur or MGM Grand or something. Um, they had just put in the arcade bit, the more family bit, but they didn't put in a bathroom. And so I had to go to the bathroom at one point and I had to go into the casino and try and cut through the slot machines. And I actually got thrown out of the building for the crime of trying to go to the bathroom. So th there's my big bad memory of it. But uh, anyway, uh, getting back to New York, New York for a second here. I've been back to Vegas once since then, and that was in 2006, uh, by which time I was of age. And uh, this is kind of crumbling on me. But uh, this place, just in nine years, had gotten really run down. And uh, I'm not even sure this still exists anymore. Um, yeah, the, the 06 trip was uh, a little depressing. Not that 97 was all that great either, but uh, uh, I could go on about the 06 trip for a while, and I don't want to do that. So anyway, uh, finally, let's get down to what's in here. Now, I've already dug through this, I'll, I'll tell you already, so I already have an idea, a very good idea of what's in here. And uh, not all of this is straight from Vegas, but everything has a purpose as to uh, why it's in here. And so uh, let's just get started here. Uh, we'll start with the little thing of the lot. And, uh, you know, you think Vegas, you think gambling. And this must have been just like one of those one ticket wonder items uh, from the arcade because you've got uh, what's about the size of a regular die, but with two dice within it. And you can kind of shake it up and can't really uh, get much in the way of new numbers, but uh, I just uh, thought that was kind of odd and it was something I had totally forgotten about. Now, uh, getting on to the tangential stuff here. Um, this is not from Vegas. This uh, Viewmaster with a, a certain unmentionable character from a certain unmentionable company on it. Um, but I keep this and I keep my uh, childhood Viewmaster reels in here. Yeah, it's a Viewmaster. Uh, because one of the things I got in Vegas, um, here's my childhood collection of uh, Viewmaster stuff from the 80s. But anyway, um, let's see if I can find those reels. One of the things I won was a set of reels. And uh, I'll try and scan these. I, I wouldn't expect much uh, quality-wise just within my own means, but I'll try and let you see a couple pictures from this. But uh, that's why all that lives in there. Uh, unfortunately, the box that this came with is long gone. Don't know whatever happened to it. It may have not have even had one. I really honestly don't remember at this point. But anyway, moving on. Um, okay, so I appreciate the humor of this now. I didn't back then. But, uh, you know, one of the great stereotypes of Las Vegas is the uh, notion of uh, the mafia pretty much running it. And, you know, like the ma mafia printing off their own money and stuff. So one of the things I won, or maybe just bought somewhere, was uh, what is a printing press, I guess you could say. And so what we've got here is what is really just one piece of... Uh, plastic lined paper and it's black on one side and green on the other and it just runs in an s configuration but anyway uh this is how to make your own money and like i said i i didn't really appreciate the humor and i'm not even sure it was intended to be that way uh at the time but uh i think it's funny so anyway, you're supposed to be able to take a piece of regular paper, stick it in one end, and then get a piece of real money out the other end. Of course, you have to load it up yourself. So I've still got the uh, play money that this came with. We'll see if I can still do this. Um, I might mess this up. So let's see if I can uh, get... Nope. Good thing I have another piece. 
Let me try and crank the other one here. Yeah, there we go. So we got the money down in there. Got a regular piece of paper. And when I crank the, I believe, top knob, this will just magically turn into uh, real money. Real money. And of course, there's no logic uh, image-wise. Oh, well. Okay, let's uh, let's move on here. Uh, now, I've got two of these here, and I haven't tested these in a long time. I, I decided not to test them. I figured I'd try and keep it a little bit of a surprise for myself. Uh, but these are supposed miracle fish, uh, fortune teller fish, and they're just uh, pieces of plastic cut out in the shape of a fish. And uh, let me get one out here. So you take one of these kind of Swedish fish looking things and you're supposed to stick it on your uh, hand and it'll curl in at least one direction and it's supposed to mean something. So um, let's just try and take a quick look here and uh, we'll see if this still works and uh, what my great emotional state is. Okay, so it curled up and kind of flopped over. Uh, I guess curls up entirely. Passionate. I guess that works for me. Okay, um, moving on. So uh, I mentioned we ate dinner at uh, Planet Hollywood, or maybe it was lunch or something. For some reason, I kept the placemat with uh, all these... Uh, pictures of uh, people that eventually became famous in their high school yearbook photos. And I don't know why I kept it, but I guess I should be kind of glad I did at this late a date, uh, despite it being all folded up. And uh, this probably won't do a whole lot of good anymore. This uh, feels a little dried out to me, but uh, yes, I, I owned a couple of whoopee cushions as a kid was never quite wily enough to con anybody to sitting on the damn thing, but uh, I tried. Okay, so here's a postcard from that Planet Hollywood. I think I've got this the right side up. Um, it's not always the easiest to tell. Yes, I'm messing with you a little. Anyway, uh... This is kind of what I remember it looking like. Uh, maybe it's just uh, old age getting in the way or something, but this seems to be about right for what I remember. And I remember like bits of action movies on a screen or something. And uh, I remember the memorabilia was just awful. I, I don't remember being interested at in any of the memorabilia. But uh, yeah, I think this uh, might be an outside shot. That does look a little familiar, but I just can't quite place it. Oh, well. Uh, one more item. And uh, this is something I've already excerpted on Archive before. And this was, I think, on the Gambling Videos episode. And uh, when we were in Vegas, uh, one of the things I got that was not an arca arcade prize, excuse me, uh, was this video postcard on VHS and it uh, on the spine here you got kind of a rundown of what's on here or what was going on in Vegas at the time and I believe this was just brand new hot off the presses when we were there. Um, I think this is uh, from the beginning of 1997 so uh, spring of 97 would be right as far as my own memory goes I think. Uh, I did find it kind of weird that it says it's uh, licensed from JVC, but uh, that's certainly not the JVC logo I'm used to. And if memory serves, the JVC logo and name never do appear anywhere on the tape. Um, so I'm not entirely sure what the deal was or if it was just a big con. But uh, evidently, I spent 10 bucks on it at some place called W.H. Smith. Uh, which must have been in one of those little, like, mini-mall sort of places, like within uh, Caesar's Palace or something. I, I really don't remember. But anyway, 
that's all the stuff. And that's more or less it for this edition of Ben's Junk. I will try and run some scans of some of the Viewmaster images, so just so you have an idea of what the images were. And I uh, do have a DVD burned of uh, the video postcard, and I'll throw in just a few brief little bits just to give you a little taste of it. And otherwise, that is it for this edition of Ben's Junk, and that's also it for this year's summer interstitial schedule. So next week, Archive Returns, season number six. I'll see you then. I was going to write you a postcard, but with Las Vegas, you just got to see it. Hailed as the greatest city in Las Vegas, the fantastic New York, New York Hotel opened January 3rd, 1997 with a spectacular VIP party and fireworks display. Happy New Year, Merry Christmas. New York and New York are the best. At least the heck out of sushi. <laughs> You're no stranger to Las Vegas, of course. You know. No, I'm, I'm not a stranger to Las Vegas. <laughs> you say that with a tear in your eye. Oh, well, I, I do have fun here. Yeah. And it's only 45 minutes from Los Angeles, and uh, I come here often just to escape. Equal to four and a half football fields, the canopy covers more than four acres and is filled with over two million computer-controlled lights. 208 speakers drive 540,000 watts of concert quality sound during the show. 31 computers with 100 gigabytes of storage deliver the show, which is free to the public. A complete Western theme park that stages gunfights and audience participation shows daily. But the real magic belonged to Siegfried and Roy with their vision of mastering the impossible. The $100 million forum shops at Caesars Palace is a world-class shopping experience. More than 30,000 people a day are drawn to the 240,000 square feet of luxury, retail shops, and unique dining experiences like Planet Hollywood and Spago's. How about the $50 million Star Trek experience that the Las Vegas Hilton is building? The 65,000 square foot complex will recreate the Starship Enterprise in a futuristic casino and entertainment center. Well, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed my video postcard.